the Flagstaff Gallery, Daniela. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about your background with regard to art and how you got involved in being a professional artist? Well, it's actually quite a funny story. It's, um, when I was growing up, I've always wanted to be an artist, and, um, but my parents were traditional people and didn't think it was a good job to go and be an artist as a girl, so I did nursing, and that's how I met my husband. And, um, we had a couple of kids and he got sick of me saying, oh, I want to buy this, oh, I love that. Oh, he says, you can go and do it yourself. So he bought me an easel and canvas and he enrolled me at a, um, actually a local guy here who specializes in oil painting and um, he's a, a realist. And um, so once, once a week I went to him and learned a technique of using oil paint and um, a realistic painting, but I soon figured out that it wasn't quite me, I had my own style early on, but that's really how I got started and um, I would say even as a child, you know, I really loved it and early on I would sit there colouring bright colours and drawing and things like that, so I, I think it's it's something that you're born with and um, it's something that I've always had to do, whether, whether I did nursing, I always did creative things on the side and but really my love affair with painting started because of my husband enrolling me in these art classes. So and that happened about 13 years ago. So yes. And um, you uh, still continue to do oil uh, painting. Uh, is there any reason for that? Or yeah, I really love the um, the texture and the the feel of of the oils, the depth of colour you get, and this the the. I had the ability to move the paint around on the canvas versus acrylic, even though you can use mediums to make um, the work um, dry less fast with acrylics, I think there's just something special about oils. It's the smell and it's the texture and the fact that I can work on the work a long time and perfect the, the gradation of colours and things like that that really appeals to me. What is the primary motivation behind your work? Um, I just really want to bring happiness to people's lives. So when they walk into a room and they've got one of my works hanging there, there's a bit of a paradise that is in their house because there's so much sadness in the world and sort of depressing things happening that I feel that really that's what I like to do, bring a bit of joy into people's lives. That's my main focus. Uh, would you say this is uh, what you wish the viewer to take away with them when they look at your work? Absolutely. It's, um, I think the bright colours I use gives a sense of, of uh, well-being and joy and that, that is really the purpose and I think that, that's important for me to portray as an artist that it's a feel-good quality about my work um, and um, a bit of joy, yeah. Which artists have influenced you the most? Um, I would say it's Fernand Leger with his monumental figures and um, I love the style of his work, very simplistic but yet modern and a Dutch artist called Piet Mondrian who uses the grid-like grid um, minimalist work with the vibrant colours and Henri Rousseau with the leaves, as you see that in some of my works, the way I paint the leaves are, are based on his type of work, yeah. Uh, what would you say are the challenges you face in creating art in New Zealand? Um, I think it's a small market, it's, it's, and particularly since I specialise in one particular area, um, it's very hard to sort of um, target a huge sort of market here. You have to really go overseas, and a lot of my work actually goes overseas, and um, I think that's really the restraints, it's just a small market here. So yeah, it's very hard to sort of, um, um, I don't know, just, yeah, just, just, it's a small market. Uh, your work's predominantly about uh, Pacific Islands. Um, how would you say, or has New Zealand um, influenced your work in any way? Well, as you know, I'm actually, I was born in Holland and I came here as a, an immigrant myself. And it was really the union of two cultures, um, of my husband's uh, Pacific Island culture, Samoan culture, and my own culture that sort of influenced how I look at life and the values and the things that make me happy and I've incorporated the New Zealand lifestyle, you know, adjusting from being a European to now being called a Kiwi and then having a mix of Polynesian culture thrown in there. Um, it just makes me happy and it reflects in my work I think with the iconography I use and um, 
Pacific iconography with a, a twist of Dutch um, heritage in there as well. What excites you most about going to New York? Um, it's the fact that it's a huge market. It's new, it's exciting, and um, it's just it's a step into an international market. So that's really, um, yeah, it's really exciting. What do you hope to bring to the exhibition? Um, just a touch of um, differences in culture. It's, it's the true South Pacific culture, but also a mix that you don't necessarily see a lot of in the States. I'm aware that there's a lot of Samoans that immigrated to um, the States as well as New Zealand, so there is the Samoan culture is there too. But I, I don't think you see that a lot in the um, American art scene. So uh, I think I'll bring something unique in that respect. And what are your thoughts about the Flagstaff Gallery bringing contemporary New Zealand art to New York? I think it's fabulous. I think Flagstaff has got a great mix of very talented artists and who specialise in uh, New Zealand iconography and um, with a twist as well. And I just think it's fabulous that they um, making this big move to go over and, and tap into an international art market. Yeah, thank you Daniela, best of luck in New York.